John here guys and today we're talking about the DJI 50 megabyte 50 megabits you guys correct me a lot on that last time update and what it does to the Cadex Nebula now when I first put a video out on the Cadex Nebula I noted that there were a number of issues not just issues related to the image quality not just related to the latency which there is a lot but related to terrible artifacting, ghosting, screen tearing. This was virtually unusable. And a lot of the other reviewers, even though off the record, I had talked to some and noted that they were experiencing the same thing. No one else really commented on it. I don't really know if they just didn't want to say that this new product was bad. They didn't want to get on DJI's bad side, but like, I don't care. DJI hasn't sent me anything. And even if they did, I'm still going to tell you how it is. I don't understand the reason why you wouldn't. But anyway, all of the artifacting and ghosting and screen tearing that I saw on my copy, I verified with a lot of members of the community that they were experiencing the same thing, which is really frustrating because I knew going into this that this was going to be some sacrifices. I knew that this smaller camera with the smaller lens was likely going to have a little bit less image quality. We knew that the 60 frames per second recording and 16 by nine image was probably going to have some compromises compared to the 120 frame per second Vista unit uh, that is four by three. But I was okay with all of those as long as it was flyable and it could fly and make this tiny little three inch under a hundred gram build um, digital capable. And it just was terrible. But the 50 megabits per second update actually fixed the majority of those issues. It was getting to the point where I thought maybe it was my linear antenna that I was using, but Ferrati's done that a number of times. Maybe it was the all-in-one nameless board that I was using, but it should be fine. Like I couldn't figure it out and I thought this thing was just a piece of junk because a lot of people had experienced it. Well, the update fixed all of that. There's no screen tearing, no artifacting. Now the image still isn't as good, but it's basically what I thought I was paying for, okay? Now, now that I have it in my hands with all of those issues gone, I can actually focus on what it does, what it looks like. So the image does seem a little bit better. It's a little bit nicer. It's still a little grainier than the ver version. And I can explain to you very easily how this feels when flying. It feels like the image quality prior to this update, right, of low latency mode on a V-Star Air unit, it feels like the image quality of low latency mode, but it feels like the latency of high quality mode. So really like the sacrifices of both. So you have higher latency of the high quality mode, but lower image quality of the um low latency mode and if you want to get a sense of how it feels and how it flies that's really the closest i can give you the 16 by 9 image doesn't really bother me that much the colors seem a little bit fixed but you're gonna get a lot of that pixelation a lot of the shimmer a lot of the grass like all kind of meshing into one thing it can't really define um, those individual pieces especially if you're moving at any speed that's why i would not recommend using the nebula on anything larger than probably three inch where you're just going to kind of be floating around even then the latency was just a little too high and i don't know if it was the latency maybe it's the frame per second but it feels a little disconnected and i'm something about the dji image it's very flat when you have the goggles on your head compared to like a set of fat sharks and I noticed before I had the DJI goggles, I once spectated someone racing them with a second set of goggles and I got very dizzy. Um, now I noted that even though spectating made me dizzy, um, actually flying does not at all, but this feels disconnected enough to where I'm not quite getting dizzy, but it feels a little weird. It feels a little disconnected. I wish that they just got 
um, 120 frames per second on here. The 60 is just really messing it up, man. Um, and now here's another frustrating thing. Supposedly there's a version two of this hardware. Um, Albert Kim has it because he is the Caddx guy, I guess. Um, and so what does that mean for us? That is very frustrating. And Ferrati was like, why would you just run out and buy the V1 of this new Caddx camera? And I thought about that because Caddx really has been <laughs> Um, kind of a rung below the quality that we normally expect from like Fox Hero or Run Cam. And there, there used to be kind of a running joke in town that um, that some worker at the factory at Caddx would sprinkle a little bit of dust onto the sensor of every camera before they shipped it out because it seemed anytime you got a new Caddx camera, there was automatically just dust in the sensor. Um, and... I really had wiped all that away. I mean, they secured the deal with DJI, so I figured like, oh man, they're operating on another level. They're operating on another standard. You know, in order for them to get that negotiation contract with DJI, but it doesn't seem like it's really the case. So we really still have to worry about V1s coming out from Caddx, even if they are on the digital system. There doesn't seem to be any update that's gonna fix it completely. So the update will fix the screen tearing, but it's not gonna fix the image quality, and I did take a quick peek at some of the footage on Amber Albert Kim's video, and some of that pixelation um, is improved on the unit that he, he has. I don't know if the latency or the frames per second is fixed at all, but that's very frustrating. So if you have the V1, you're just kind of stuck. So I am happy that the update really made it functional, but I think if you really want the full DJI experience, you got to just take the extra three or four grams. And that's the other thing. It really doesn't save you much. It allows you to fit it into a small quad like this. But there's a few frames coming out that do accommodate a Vista. And I think that's going to be next on my list. The two that or the three that really stand out are the Torque FPV thing that Ferrari has been flying the Airblade Transformer that I'm going to be checking out. And then there is, of course, Dave C's little long range thing. I think that would be a good Vista unit um, flyer that's fairly light. So what do you think in the comments, guys? Did you get stuck on this Nebula thing? If you did, go ahead and update. It's now usable. Now note, even though it says 50 megabyte per second, this doesn't actually do that bit rate. It only does about 20 and it would go all the way down to like under 10 if you got a little far. Um, so it does improve it, but you're not actually re recording in that bit rate. Uh, the other thing that I did note was that the latency does seem to float around that high quality mode on the previous to the update. It floats around 35 to like 45, um, but it's really the latency combined with the 60 megabyte for frame rate that really makes it feel just a little disconnected. So. Some good and some bad. What do you think, guys? Thanks.